Hey. Ah. Howdy. Hello. Personally, I am changing out of my medieval clothes into my normal people clothes. It has been an insane day. It's been one of those days where everything's been absolutely wonky. Um, I had court twice, like royal court, you know, like medieval court, and um, had all kinds of festivities. We had the royal feast, um, entourage, all the things. I just have to find my pants. I got my hair professionally braided. Uh, I don't know if I posted pictures of that or not. I think I did. Um, if I didn't, I will. Um, because it's adorable. I had ribbon braided into my hair, uh, which was bougie as hell. Um, I had medieval style braids put in. Um. I've had a lot of fun uh, seeing a lot of people I haven't seen in a while, giving lots of hugs, and uh, having a lot of fun doing the medieval thing. And uh, the good thing about this is I don't have to mess with my hair. It's braided, and if I leave it in for about two days and I take it down uh i will have insanely curly hair which is gorgeous hello um who doesn't love gorgeous hair i mean come on um, i hope everyone has enjoyed all of my bougie ass pictures i've posted and uh, all of our antics, quite frankly. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Hey, Mary. But anyway, today we're not doing drama. Okay, no drama today. Um, but what we will do is some cryptids. Who doesn't want to do cryptids? Like, for real. Whew. I know I'm tired, but I still want to learn about cryptids, even if they are creepy. Starting to think I shouldn't have put that. There we go. Anyway, so let's get it started. Let's get it started in here. Oh, whoa. Better pick that first. Oh, look at that.
In a world where the line between myth and reality is blurred, where the shadows hold secrets that defy explanation, and where the unknown lurks in the darkest corners of our imagination, comes a revelation that will send chills down your spine. Brace yourself as we delve into the depths of the unexplained and the realm of the mysterious that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. From the Fresno Nightcrawlers to the New Jersey Devil, get ready for a heart-pounding journey into the realm Realm of the Extraordinary, as we present to you the 20 creepy cryptid sightings caught on film. Number 20. Mermaid. YouTube is full of strange and bizarre videos. The person who recorded this video claims that it shows one of the scariest creatures ever caught on camera. The video is set at Lake Shalotlan, Nicaragua. As you watch, you can't believe your eyes. What the hell is that? Yeah, no, no, N no, <laughs> uh-uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but, uh, no, <laughs> hey, mousey, meow, 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 Good to see you, Mousy. And thank you for my coloring book. You are amazing. Even though I know one of them is going to give me nightmares. I still love you. Even though you traumatize me, um, I still love you. Um, I've seen some interesting things in this campsite, so I'm not sure watching cryptids. While in the middle of the woods, camping by myself, uh, I'm not sure how good of an idea this is. <laughs> but hey, you only live once, <laughs> you know. <laughs> On a creaky wooden dock by the water, there is a creature that looks like a mermaid. Yes, a mermaid, the half-human, half-fish creature from folklore. The mermaid could be seen struggling and desperately trying to go back into the water. Its movements are a mix of grace and struggle, as if it is tra trapped between two worlds. You feel sorry for this strange being as it fights to find comfort in the depths of the water. What's astonishing is that this is not the only video of its kind. Many videos claiming to show mermaids can be found on YouTube. People are both confused and fascinated by these alleged sightings, which come from places all over the world. But the question remains, are these creatures real or just a hoax? Unfortunately, we can't definitively answer that. It's a mystery waiting to be solved. We'll leave it to you, the curious viewer, to think about whether this footage is genuine or a clever trick. Regardless, watching a mermaid in real life, struggling to return to its watery home, gives a weird feeling. It's like a darker and more sinister version of Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Number 19. Fresno Nightcrawlers. I don't know for sure. Okay, so don't quote me on this. But I feel like there has been reports of a dolphin that was like, I don't know, deformed somehow. And I feel like that could have been a dolphin that was just mutated somehow. Like that might not have been a, a cryptid per se. That may have just been like a deformed dolphin. It, it it had dolphin attributes. I don't know. Could be. I mean, it could be a cryptid, but a uh, mermaid, maybe, but I, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe it was something as simple as a dolphin with some defects. You know, just a thought. A strange sight was captured on a home security camera in Fresno, California, back in 2007. <clears throat> it showed a peculiar creature known as the Fresno Night Crawler, which looked like a pair. Oh, I hate this video. I hate this video. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. 
Because here's the thing. Even if that was a person, which it could not possibly be, unless they were uh, midgets on stilts, and even then that wouldn't be likely, um, because there's not enough room on the top even for a midget. Um, these things are real. There have been too many people see these things for them to be a hoax, unfortunately. Um, this video creeps me the hell out. And hey, Franco McCoy, good to see you. Um, thank you for your, your sweet words today. You're too kind. Um, I really appreciate you. And you're right, they're jealous, and I, I can't help that. That's not my fault. A pair of pants walking around without a body. This unusual occurrence gained local fame, and soon two more sightings were reported in Yosemite National Park in 2011. The footage of the night crawler spread widely online, sparking discussions about aliens and demons. However, skeptics started investigating, and a YouTuber named Captain Disillusion analyzed the footage. He pointed out that the poor quality of the recordings made it easy to fake using CGI or a modified video clip of someone wearing MC Hammer pants. To make matters more suspicious, the owner of the original tape claimed to have accidentally erased the high-quality version, making it impossible to verify the authenticity. This convenient circumstance led skeptics to believe that the entire incident was likely a hoax orchestrated by the camera owner for attention. Since there have been no sightings of these peculiar creatures before or after these incidents, unless they reappear, we personally believe that this whole thing was just a publicity stunt to promote wearable sleeping bags which resemble the night crawlers. Number 18, Ice Monster. A creature was seen swimming in the cold Chena River in Alaska in October. Craig McCarthy, an employee of the Bureau of Land Management, spotted the icy creature swimming in the murky water. He quickly recorded a video of the sighting, which sparked a debate on the Internet. Some people wondered if it could be Nessie, the legendary creature from Loch Ness in Scotland, visiting North America. In the footage, you can see what appears to be a 15-foot-long creature moving through the water. It seems to have icicles on its back due to the freezing conditions. McCarthy spoke to a local newspaper and initially thought, along with others, that it might be a rope tangled on the riverbed with chunks of ice. Different theories have been proposed, ranging from a sea monster to a giant sturgeon. Some experts support the idea that it could be a rope with formed icicles, helping it stay afloat and giving the impression of swimming. Despite the video, no one has been able to conclusively prove the identity of the creature lurking in the water. This has led many to believe that it could be genuine evidence of an unidentified creature that modern science has yet to classify. Number 17, Mothman. Here's a question that you probably haven't heard before. Do you believe in Mothman? Oh, you might not know what Mothman is. Well, it's kind of like Batman, but completely different from Batman. Does that explanation help? Maybe we should just move on. I love the way he explained that. <laughs> it's kind of like Batman, only nothing like Batman, only the opposite of Batman, but it's kind of like Batman, only nothing like Batman. There's no comparison. <laughs> Batman was not actually part bat. <laughs> he just wore a bat costume. <laughs> This is nothing like Batman. What are you talking about? And I kind of do. I kind of do believe in Mothman. Like some of the stories I've heard on the Mothman have been pretty damn convincing. Um, so I tend to believe in cryptids. That may throw a few of you off. Doesn't matter if my beliefs are my beliefs. And I happen to believe that cryptids do exist because there are so many undiscovered species on this planet that we could not even begin to understand. Um, there are so many creatures in the ocean that we haven't even discovered yet. 
there are vast forests on this planet that we have nowhere near even begun to discover. There are forests we don't even know about where no no living person has even ventured to and God knows how long if ever this is this planet is so much bigger and complex more complex than we give it credit for and who's to say new species don't evolve every day like we discover new species in the ocean literally every day who's to say the same cannot be said about forests and deserts like we cannot be so arrogant as to believe that we know about every living creature on this planet because we don't we don't know for sure some things are truly extinct we just know that we haven't seen them in a long time i mean you have to really think about these kinds of things because i think we as humans like to think that we know everything um, in order to give ourselves some false sense of security but the truth is we don't know everything we don't even know a fraction of all there is to know it's boundless the things that we do not know yet so really who who's to say mothman isn't real can you say that with a certainty you absolutely can't you can say that you've not seen any evidence uh, to support it you can certainly say that or you can research it for yourself and make up your own mind personally in my opinion I do believe he exists I don't believe he's the only one. I believe he is a species. One of many of this species, perhaps. Or he may be the only living one. Who can say, really? On November 15, 1966, a newspaper in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, reported that several people had witnessed a bird-like creature, similar to a man in size, during a normal evening in the area. This report received national attention, and many people became intrigued by the mysterious creature. Soon, numerous individuals from all over the United States claimed to have seen the same creature, leading to its nickname, Mothman. Even today, people still claim to spot this alleged creature, especially with the help of modern technology. However, it has become increasingly challenging to convince others of these sightings due to the ease of skepticism and the difficulty of providing irrefutable evidence. In this era, even video evidence cannot be fully trusted. Seeing is believing, but it must be seen in a way that cannot be disproven. Life can be complicated with so many rules to consider. Number 16 cryptid swims in Thames. In the middle of 2016, the internet buzzed with a captivating video that unveiled a mesmerizing sight unfolding in the murky depths of London's Thames River. A curious tourist aboard a cable car seeking breathtaking views of Greenwich stumbled upon something truly extraordinary. Across from the renowned O2 Arena, the observer's eyes widened as they witnessed a remarkable creature gracefully navigating the water. For a fleeting moment, a colossal entity emerged from the depths, casting an imposing shadow beneath the surface. Its back was adorned with a series of multiple fins, adding to the mystique of its colossal size. Alas, the encounter was fleeting, granting only a tantalizing glimpse of this enigmatic being. Speculations abound regarding its true identity. 
Some daringly proposed that this creature might be a Basilosaurus, a colossal marine beast that roamed the Earth some 35 to 40 million years ago, yet somehow managed to survive undetected in the unseen depths of the river. An awe-inspiring notion, indeed. Nonetheless, skepticism shrouds this breathtaking footage, with skeptics postulating that it could be a clever fabrication, digitally manipulating the footage to introduce the mythical creature into the frame. The very possibility of such an ancient, gargantuan creature having eluded human awareness for countless years and now calling the River Thames its home is a tantalizing enigma. Number 15. Grotesque Monster On July 23, 2011, two boys heard strange noises on their property and decided to investigate. They used their phones to capture footage of their encounter as they searched through the dark surroundings of their rural farm. They could only see a few feet ahead of them with a dimly lit torch, and they heard eerie noises in the distance. Eventually, they stumbled upon a barn covered in graffiti. From inside, a sound similar to a wild boar's guttural squeal sent chills down their spines. It was a chilling groan that would make anyone's blood run cold. The two boys hid, switching off their torches. They could hear something scratching behind the wall. Despite the craziness of the situation, they decided to take a peek inside the barn. To their surprise, they spotted a creature with a humanoid appearance lurking in the loft. It had a pale face with small eyes, a wide nose, and a bald head. The creature shrieked at them, causing the boys to panic and run into the darkness of the night. People have speculated about the identity of this mysterious creature. Some suggest it might be a demon, while others believe it could be an alien hybrid seeking refuge in the abandoned barn. Could it possibly be an animal that has managed to avoid human contact until now? Number 14. Humanoid Creature. This video is quite disturbing. It was supposedly recorded in a remote zoo in Romania back in 2014. It is believed that a traveler passing through rural Romania discovered a secret farm operated by illegal traffickers. This farm, which is heavily guarded... Okay. So I'm going to commentate on the whale, what looked to be a whale. Um, I don't know about that one because the creatures he listed off would have been uh, primarily salt water. So unless that water was brackish or, you know, contained a lot of salt water. I don't see it surviving in that. Uh, but there certainly are sturgeon that are, that do become quite massive. Um, I, I don't know. I can't give you an opinion one way or another. I don't I don't really feel like I don't know. It seems sketchy to me. I'm going to have to put X to doubt on that particular video. Um, I'll look into it some more. But from that video, I'm suspicious. And I just, I don't believe it. Um the second video after that with the preacher in the barn um could have been a deformed human let's be real okay um there's a i don't want to call them a race of humans because that don't seem fair. There are albino people. And some albino people are deformed. And unfortunately some of those people who are albino and deformed get shunned by their families. Um that could have been the case with that, uh, which is unfortunate. Or it could have been a preacher. 
but it looked like a deformed albino person to me. That's just my opinion. Um, everyone has one, but it, in my opinion, it looked like an albino person hiding in a loft, unfortunately. That's sad, but I don't think it was a creature. Um, startling, yes. Creature, I don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like maybe it was an albino person that had some deformities and was hiding because people are cruel um, and sometimes heartless and that person could have been ridiculed a lot and sought refuge in that barn. It would have made sense. It would have made logical sense. Um, it could have been explained, basically, is what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't want to call it a creature. Um, you can make your own, form your own opinion, but to me, that didn't seem like a creature at all. It seemed like a person, an albino person, that had some deformities, in my opinion. Apparently houses exhibits that are kept hidden from the general public, either because they are unknown or because people prefer not to know about them. Hey, McQueen. I'm doing cryptids tonight. Um, if you want to come watch cryptids, you can. Um, if you still want to come on panel, I'm not covering Andy today, but the invitation to come on panel is still there. If you want to come up, good. If not, we can wait on Andrew. It's up to you. Surprisingly, the backpacker managed to sneak a camcorder onto the property and filmed one of these exhibits. The video starts with the backpacker explaining that the zoo has a deformed animal locked up in one of the sheds. As he moves through a crowd of people, everything goes dark. The crowd gathers around a sealed cell with thick steel bars, and their reactions indicate that something extraordinary is happening. Eventually, a gap opens up between two people, revealing a glimpse of a strange creature that appears to be humanoid. The creature moans loudly as it clumsily moves forward. Someone in the crowd yells, causing everyone to recoil in horror as the full... I'm probably going to cover that one tomorrow or Monday. Um, the new Dopper Deviant one, yeah, it, it was really good. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. I was just too tired um, to mess with Andrew today. I've had a long day and kind of just wanted to relax. And I can't really relax and listen to Andrew. Andrew makes me furious. <laughs> extent of the creature's deformities becomes apparent. It seems to be a disfigured monster held against its will. The footage suddenly goes black, leaving us to ponder what we have just witnessed. No one has been able to provide an explanation for this video. Many people hope that it is fake, but there is an unsettling authenticity to it that leaves a lasting impact. Number 13, Pennsylvania White Bigfoot. In Carbondale, Pennsylvania, local residents have reported seeing a strange creature lurking in the woods. They describe it as a tall, white Bigfoot, about six to seven feet in height, covered in shaggy fur all over its body. People often hear unusual sounds like low groans and rustling in the trees. In 2008, a video went viral showing this creature. It was recorded by a man who heard noises from his yard, which borders the woodland. In the clip, you can see a very peculiar-looking creature. It briefly pauses and then swiftly disappears into the darkness. It has deep black eyes, a long cone-shaped head, and is covered in white fur. Experts have pointed out that faking such a figure would be... Uh, Aloha De Niro, Scrappy. Oh, don't say that. Yeah, right, McQueen. ...be extremely challenging. The creature's tall stature and massive proportions are unusual, and it moves quickly despite its large size. Its face also reacts and contorts, suggesting that it's not simply a mask. 
It's worth mentioning that Carbondale has the first underground mine in the U.S., a vast network of dark tunnels. Some speculate that this creature might reside deep within these mines and only emerge to hunt. This creature, known as the Rake, is a terrifying entity that has been gaining attention recently. Number 12. Alien Hybrid Several years ago, a strange incident was captured on film in a remote area of southern Vermont, United States, a few miles north of the Green Mountain National Forest. Local residents had been reporting sightings of a peculiar creature with long limbs. The situation escalated when livestock in their backyard were discovered dead with puncture wounds on their necks, and other animals, including chickens, were disappearing without a trace. Eventually, the footage emerged when two children claimed to have encountered an alien in a nearby park. They explained that while heading home from a party, they heard unusual sounds. They quickly pulled out their phones and captured footage of a peculiar creature with long limbs walking across the grass from behind a tree. The creature had a round black head and a slim body. Its hind legs resembled those of a human, but what stood out the most were its two front arms, which moved eerily as it stalked through the park. Initially, the authenticity of the footage was met with skepticism. However, the boys insisted that it was genuine and hadn't been altered in any way. The video, combined with the reports of dead livestock, raises an unsettling question. Could there really be an extraterrestrial creature living in the hills of southern Vermont? Number 11, the skunk ape. The skunk ape is a... No, I totally believe that one about Vermont. I've driven through Vermont. I've been to Vermont a few times, traveling and whatnot. There are a lot, a lot of things in Vermont that are unsettling. Hmm. So, I mean, I believe the, the albino yeti, too. I believe that the skunk ape, I believe it's Bigfoot. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think if people knew what was really in these forests, people wouldn't go hiking nearly as often. A big, smelly creature that has been seen in the swamps and forests of the southern USA. People have reported seeing the skunk ape since 1957. In 2000, someone sent a photo to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office in Florida, claiming it showed the creature on their back deck. Some think it might be an orangutan, but orangutans have red fur, so this doesn't match. The photo could be fake, but it's one of the most convincing pieces of evidence. Another alleged skunk ape sighting was shared on YouTube in 2013 by Josh Highcliffe, showing a creature similar to Bigfoot pulling bark off a tree in Mississippi. Some say these sightings could be bears, but when Josh's creature stands up, it's clearly not a bear. It's hard to say if these sightings are real or just people in dooms. One issue is that if Bigfoot is real, there would need to be many of them to survive. Without a big population, they wouldn't be able to reproduce well, and they would gradually die out. On the other hand, if there were many Bigfoot, sightings would be more common and the mystery would be lessened. So whether Bigfoot is bears, apes, costumes, or unknown species, one thing is certain. They're fun to think about while spending time in the wild. Number 10, La Junta, Alien. The alien encounter would have been a complete... Dobby is a free air. Right, McQueen? Also true, Strappy. Look, Dobby is a free elf. Master has given him a sock. Dobby is a free elf. Completely different story in today's world. One major factor is the abundance of cameras everywhere, which would make it difficult to protect the alien from curious onlookers. 
If you need proof of this, just take a look at the following video. It was posted on Facebook and captured outside a home in La Junta. The footage shows a peculiar creature resembling something like Dobby wandering around the neighborhood. It seems confused. <laughs> Even the narrator said it was Dobby. <laughs> Dobby is free. <laughs> it looks like Dobby's naked, too, because you can see Dobby's ass cheeks. Used or curious with its wobbly legs and floppy ears. The homeowner, Vivian Gomez, noticed a shadow outside her front door but it wasn't until she reviewed the footage that she realized what was happening. Interestingly, the other two cameras didn't capture anything. Once the footage was shared online, it caused a frenzy worldwide. People from all over chimed in, hoping to uncover the identity of this creature. However, there is still no definite answer. Could it be an alien, a person in a suit, or something else entirely? The response that can be given is, <laughs> Dobby hasn't gotten much worse since uh, Harry Potter leave Dobby alone. Well, apparently Dobby is working them streets. <laughs> you have given me a cock. I'm a free elf. <laughs> Dobby is a prostitute now, apparently, street walking. <laughs> I'm going to hell. I know this. I have no idea. Number nine, Chupacabra. The Chupacabra is a creature seen in Texas and Mexico. It attacks and drinks the blood of livestock. In Texas, it looks like a large dog with spikes on its back. While in Mexico, it's seen as an alien lizard. Pictures of the chupacabra are often scary, but they are usually just sick dogs or coyotes with a skin disease called mange. This makes them lose their hair and their skin shrivel. So the chupacabra is usually a sick animal, not a scary monster. There are some sites where the creature looks more monstrous. For example, there is a video claiming to show a chupacabra in the Navajo Nation reservation. But closer examination reveals it to be a computer-generated fake added to the footage. Most chupacabra sightings can be explained as hoaxes or misidentifications. However, there have been cases where livestock have been found with drained blood. This can be explained by a natural process called lividity. When an animal dies, its blood settles in the lower parts of its body, creating the illusion of blood loss, especially if a blood test is done on the upper parts. This scientific explanation clarifies the origin of the Chupacabra Emmy. Number eight, Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is a strange creature from New Jersey. It has the head of a goat, bat-like wings, and a split tail and hooves. People started talking about it in the 18th century, saying it came from a witch and Satan. I wouldn't want to be part of that family. Since then, many people have claimed to see the beast. In 2015, a man named David Black even took a picture of it as it flew by. Another person recorded a video of the creature on the same night. That is a bullshit, bullshit, bullshit picture. <laughs> El Chupacabra. Um, that, that is not a legitimate picture. That is a dude in a weird costume and a green screen. Because if that picture is legitimate, the chupacabra has wings growing out of its ass. And I just, I don't, I'm sorry, but no, I'm X into that on this one. Some experts thought the video was real, but skeptics noticed that the creature's wings fluttered like a butterfly, while the rest of its body stayed completely still. This makes them think it might not be a real animal. It could be a toy with a stuffed animal or a cardboard cutout attached to it. So the video and David Black's picture are probably fake. However, there might be some truth to the Jersey Devil story, just not involving a real devil. Some people think that the early descriptions of the Jersey Devil match the hammer-headed bat, a big bat found in Africa. This bat has many of the same features as the described creature, but nobody knows how it could have ended up in New Jersey. 
It might have escaped from a zoo or someone's private collection. So the witchy deal with the devil story could still be possible, though it's probably not true. Number 7. The Wendigo. This video, created in a found footage style, was up. Now this, um, I 110 billion percent believe in the Wendigo. Those things are legit. Wendigo and skinwalkers, 100% believe in those. <laughs> Hammerhead bat. <laughs> yeah. Ass wings. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm sorry, but ass wings are not a thing. Loaded to a YouTube channel called Slender Truth in 2013. It supposedly depicts a group of boys who were followed and attacked by a creature called a Wendigo. In the footage, we see three young boys exploring an abandoned house in an unfamiliar rural area. They search through an old shack that appears to have been unused for many years. The shack is in a state of disrepair, with rotting floorboards and discarded building materials. As they reach the top floor, a sense of unease builds up, as if they are being watched. Finally, as they descend the... Me? They want to eat me, McQueen? Why me? What did I do to the Wendigos? Yeah, we up hunting that window seat. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> you ain't right. <laughs> Man. <laughs> no. I'm not sweet. I'm mean. So it's not going to eat me if I'm mean, right? <laughs> no. No. Panda's friend, not food. Panda is friend, not food. Say it with me. Panda is friend, not food. No eating panda. The staircase, a monstrous being peeks its head into the house. It has long, slender fingers, a large, grotesque face with deep eyes, and a snout resembling that of a bat. The footage abruptly ends, suggesting that the creature attacked the boys. According to the video's description, the creature is referred to as a Wendigo, a malevolent beast from Native American folklore known for its insatiable bloodlust. The video has amassed over 11 million views, with many viewers assuming it to be a work of fiction. However, some people argue that it might be genuine, and that the boys have been reported missing since 2013. Whether or not this claim is true remains unclear. Number six. Pale Crawler Sighting. Abandoned hospitals can be spooky places where ghosts are often encountered. However, they can also be prime locations for sighting mysterious creatures. In a YouTube video by John Edmonds, a group of urban explorers decides to investigate the abandoned Overbrook Asylum at the Essex County Hospital in Cedar Grove, New Jersey, USA. The asylum has a dark history of cruel and brutal mental health practices, including lobotomies and electroshock therapy, leading many to believe that restless and angry spirits inhabit its dilapidated hallways. But the explorers stumble upon something unexpected. While examining one of the rooms, they suddenly hear a strange screeching noise. They quickly turn the camera and capture a terrifying four-legged creature running towards them. The creature remains mostly in shadows, making it hard to see its features except for its long and thin limbs. Frightened, the explorers hastily leave the building, too terrified to stay in its path. Viewers of the footage speculate that the creature is likely a pale crawler, a lesser-known cryptid. Pale crawlers are described as elongated humanoid creatures with long limbs. People often mistake them for tall, naked humans at first, but they soon realize their bodies are oddly stretched and disproportionate. Some accounts mention glowing eyes, sharp teeth, and pale gray or white <laughs> McQueen now McQueen why did you do those people like that now you scared the living hell, hell out of those innocent people for no good reason shame on you <laughs> panda is naughty you can't confirm I'm a saint
<laughs> Skin. These qualities make them unnerving rather than explicitly threatening, at least based on the available information. Now time for today's subscriber pick. In a small town called Santa Fe in Argentina, something extraordinary was captured on camera. It's a creature unlike anything anyone has ever seen before, a mysterious being that appears to be half human and half animal. According to reports, this enigmatic creature has caused havoc by attacking and injuring two dogs. The locals are calling it the Beast. The streets of Santa Fe have become its hunting grounds, and fear has gripped the community. Witnesses who have encountered the creature describe it as having a long neck and a small head, re resembling a camel in some ways. One person shared their astonishing encounter, recalling how in 2005 they spotted the creature crossing a bridge. To their amazement, it looked directly at them before effortlessly leaping over the bridge's concrete wall, just like a kangaroo would, disappearing into the distance. Interestingly, there are similar accounts from the Philippines, where a similar creature is known as Oswang. According to local legends, it is said that a man can transform into a monstrous being. It possesses the ability to shapeshift, taking on the forms of both cats and giant birds. These reports have left people astounded and bewildered. Let's have your opinion on what you just saw. Number five, the rake. Back in 2003, the world was captivated by an extraordinary tale of a peculiar being. It was a creature like no other, with elongated limbs and razor-sharp claws, notorious for its seemingly senseless acts of violence. The story spread like wildfire across new media outlets. Mm. Okay. I'm going to be real with you on this one. <laughs> right, McQueen? Um, this looks like something out of a video game to me that has been superimposed onto a, a video of, you know, a, um, wildlife camera footage. I don't know that I believe in these. Like, it looks like something I've seen personally in a video game. So I don't, I don't know. It, it kind of seems photoshopped to me. Like it could have been clipped out of a different, you know, out of the video game and imposed into this footage. And, and people have done that before, but I don't know. I just don't believe this particular video. Let's each one eager to share the chilling accounts among the weird tales. A particular video emerged from an undisclosed location in England. It showcased a brave young man strolling through a deserted playground, his camera equipped with an infrared feature. As he ventured forward, his eyes caught sight of an enigmatic figure perched atop the playground slide. The creature's eyes illuminated upon spotting the man, and with uncanny agility, it leaped into the abyss of darkness below. In a sudden twist of events, the swings behind the man began to tremble violently, and the footage ominously faded to black. While some dismissed the existence of this creature, dubbed the rake... That dude needs to really clip his fingernails. Like... I understand you're a cryptid out here just trying to make it by, but homie, there are things called fingernail clippers. Uh, clip, clip your damn fingernails. And, uh, you know, eat a cheeseburger. You're looking awfully gaunt. Yeah, do something. God damn. Out here with your ratchety ass nails. Yeah, why not? I've seen scarier looking bitches 
in nail parlors before on several occasions. I see bitches that look like that all the time in the in the nail salon. So, I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't bat an eye. Probably nothing out of the ordinary for them. <clears throat> As pure fabrication, others find themselves swayed by such sightings. The rake has gained significant popularity in recent years, igniting the imaginations of many and giving rise to spine-chilling tales, homemade videos created by enthusiasts, and even full-fledged movies inspired by its terrifying presence. The mystery surrounding the rake lingers, leaving room for speculation about the true nature of this otherworldly entity. Number four, Bizarre Fish. According to a Reddit user named Amateur Laps, there are times when sightings of mysterious creatures can take on familiar appearances. A video shows what seems to be a normal fish emerging from a thick layer of mud and debris. Things become very strange when the fish opens its mouth and smoke starts coming out of its lungs. Cue tense and ominous music. The question arises, what could be the cause of such bizarre behavior? Is this seemingly ordinary fish actually a weird cryptid capable of breathing fire? One Reddit user tried to debunk these claims, stating that the creature is a simple lungfish and that the behavior is normal for its species. However, others who watched the video quickly pointed out that there is no mention of lungfish exhaling smoke. That fish was not just smoking weed, my dude. That fish had been hanging out with Snoop Dogg. With blows like that, definitely hanging out at Snoop Dogg's place, man. That's a Snoop Dogg fish. Oak in the provided evidence or anywhere else on the internet. Given this, it is possible that this unusual fish is actually a previously unknown cryptid, an animal that has yet to be classified by modern science. Number three, transforming creature. Did you know transformers aren't just cars? There are actually biological transformers too, but what exactly are they? Well, that's a whole different story, and it seems like no one can agree on an answer. It's kind of like most of the issues we faced in 2022, honestly. There's this online video of a strange creature that transforms underwater, and it left viewers completely shocked and confused. The video was taken by a remotely operating vehicle in the Indian Ocean at a depth of 3,753 feet near the coast of Africa. But what exactly is this creature? Scientists are still puzzled, and even expert marine biologists can't agree on its species. It's a mystery. It's worth noting that much of the world's oceans remain unexplored, so this could be an undiscovered species, which is pretty exciting for anyone interested in ocean creatures. It may not be the Little Mermaid, but the idea of underwater transformers does make me excited, I have to admit. Number two, skinwalkers. The Navajo culture in the southwestern United States is renowned for its rich traditions and customs, but hidden within their folklore are some spine-chilling creatures. Among them lurks the Skinwalker, a malevolent witch capable of shape-shifting into different animals. Legend has it that this wicked being employs its powers to deceive and eliminate members of the tribe, luring them into a false sense of security. As the tales go, when the Skinwalker assumes a human form, it exhibits animalistic behavior, growling and scurrying on all fours. Interestingly, an intriguing CCTV footage from 2021 has caught the attention of certain internet users to ponder whether it could potentially capture a sighting of a skinwalker. Watch the footage yourself and draw your own conclusions. Though it may unsettle some, skepticism exists among those who aren't convinced. Some viewers amusingly speculate that the person in the video might be frantically searching for their misplaced glasses, rigorously training for a thrilling wheelbarrow race, delighting in the refreshing night breeze after indulging in recreational substances, or simply fabricating a playful hoax of a mythical creature. Whether true or not, the allure of the Skinwalker legend captivates the imagination, adding a touch of mystery to the vibrant tapestry of the Navajo culture. Number one. The Thunderbird. The Thunderbird is a huge bird from native... <laughs> McQueen, you're killing me tonight. 
<laughs> no, she lost her cell phone. That's that's a chick coming home from the club after she lost her cell phone. I ate a wolf. No, I am not going deep sea scuba diving. You can hang that up. Not happening. There are megalodons down there, and I don't want to get eated. Um, the Thunderbird. I do believe that the Thunderbird exists. I believe a lot of things in the Native American culture. And that's part of why I believe in the Wendigo and the Skinwalker, because those were originally Native American spirits. And I 110% believe in the Native Americans history and lore because they were on this land long before anyone else was and they know what's here um so i tend to believe i believe them of american myths that made thunder sounds when it flapped its wings in 1886, some men in Tombstone, Arizona, claimed to have caught one and showed a photo with a big pterodactyl as proof. Recently, these photos were shared online, leading some people to think the Thunderbird was a real dinosaur. People who doubted the story investigated the photos and found out they were fake. In 2000, a TV show called Freaky Links made a model of a giant pterodactyl for an episode about the Tombstone Thunderbird. The photos being shared were actually from that TV show. Also, the real photos of the alleged Thunderbird from the 18th century are lost, which seems suspicious. Experts don't believe a giant pterodactyl flew around Arizona in the 18th century, but they think the Thunderbird myth might have come from dinosaur bones. While pterodactyls and pteranodons don't fly anymore, their fossilized bones can still be found in North America. In 1983, scientists found a Pelagornis sandersi fossil in North Carolina with a 24-foot wingspan and was the largest bird ever discovered. These ancient birds looked like thunderbirds. Other similar-sized bird fossils like the Argentavis from South America also went extinct millions of years ago. These kinds of fossils can be found all over the Americas. So it's understandable how people in the past who didn't know the difference between fossils and real bones could mistake them for the remains of living monsters. Hopefully, it was the fossils that caused these misconceptions. Which of these spooky creatures did you find the most disturbing? Share your thoughts. Um, I would have to say the Wendigo, um, because I do... It's in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and... Hey guys, thanks for joining. My name's Casey and this is Mindseed TV. Be something else entirely. It almost appears to be crouching down rather than standing on four legs. If we slow down the footage and zoom in, you can see the horns protruding from the front of its head and the face is flat, more like a human being's skeletal structure. So what do you think this could be? How would you feel if you were walking alone in the fields and encountered something dark and demonic staring at you like this? In these next clips, a TikTok user by the name of Casey records a strange series of events that have been unfolding on his farm. So this thing, uh, it's staring at me. It followed me home from the gifting rock. It's about one o'clock in the morning right now. I don't know what to do. He noticed that he was being followed at night by some strange unknown creatures on his land. At night, he can see glowing eyes coming from the shadows around his property. But he also mentioned he has seen them walking upright like humans. As the days go by, the events only get more frightening. What the hell was that? What the hell? 
One night he approached one of the creatures telling them to leave and gives them several warnings. All right, whatever you are, you need to leave. Stay out of this place. This is our home. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I won't be running towards it. Uh, I would like to live. Huh, Scrappy like, oh, hugs? Okay. No, Scrappy, do not run towards the, the, the beast. Don't, don't hug the creature. Okay. Not, not advised. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. You can't be out here hugging cryptids and shit, dude. No, no good. No bueno. No. <laughs> no hugging. Why am I having to say that out loud? <laughs> Y'all are so funny. This is our home. He even cocks his shotgun and fires a warning shot. You to leave. You leave now. Now things gonna come around for a little bit. One of his last video uploads about the events, he was awoken by his girlfriend saying she could hear something running around on the roof. As he goes outside, what he saw next was shocking. Okay. The same strange eyes could be seen peering at him from over the rooftop. <laughs> McQueen. Uh, hey, you're not bothering anybody. We love you, Ada Wolf. And, uh, <laughs> McQueen, when the chat is full of monster fuckers. <laughs> Y'all <Yeah. laughs> are killing me, dude. I'm sitting over here wheezing. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> Y'all are trying to get me eaten by a cryptid or a bear. One or the other. <laughs> Not sure which. This time he captured some of the creature's head on camera as well. Not being able to see its entire body, he rushes to the other side of the house. And notices the creature is nowhere to be found. What the hell? Where'd it go? What is that? But there appears to be a carcass or skeletal remains as if whatever was on the roof was eating and left in a hurry. What do you think this was? An alien? A skinwalker of some sort? Let me know down below in the comments. Speaking of aliens and skinwalkers, there have been many strange sightings of creatures with long, lanky limbs and pale bodies. In this next clip, a trail cam captures something strange crossing a dirt trail at night. At first, one would wonder, could this be a human possibly putting on an act for the camera? But the closer you look at the footage, it appears that its body structure is too limb and its limbs are much longer than that of an average human being. Even the way it moves is very odd, something like I've never seen before. 
Another sighting of the same type of creature was caught by a man riding along a dirt track at night. He was suddenly stopped when he noticed this crossing his path. A very similar type of creature captured by a different person entirely. Except this time it looks like it's crawling more than walking. But again, it has an oddly pale body and long limbs. Too long to be the average human. Then there's this clip of another farmer walking along the tree line of his fields when he hears something strange coming from within the trees. When he looks in the trees to try and get a better view, he sees this. A strange pale creature crouching down, staring back at him from the branches. At first, he wasn't quite sure what he was looking at, but as Hey, look, if you look really, 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 really close, it looks like a trash panda. <laughs> he lost his face. Hey, look, it's a trash panda. There's the little black eyes and the white nose and the little black mouth. It's a, it's 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 a trash panda. As he zooms in, it appears that whatever it was was sitting in such a way that it's about to pounce. Once he realizes what he is seeing, he quickly backs away from the trees. But the closer we look at this video, the more you can see what appears to be a horrifying face and mouth looking towards the camera. What do you think this could be? What would you do if you saw this in the tree line? In this next clip, a group of farmers notice something strange is happening with one of their goats. A large dark creature appears to be latched onto the bottom of the goat. They begin to poke and prod at whatever this is, trying to break it free from the goat. My first thought was maybe this was a predatory cat of some sort latched onto the goat trying to bite its neck. But as the creature releases the goat, what happens next is creepy and unexplainable. It slithers away through the trees as if it was something not of this world. The farmers continue to chase the creature and follow it to the nearby river. They continue filming and try to hit whatever this is with their bamboo sticks, but it makes its way into the water. One scene of this video, you can almost see it swimming underwater away from the men as they try to capture it. Whatever this thing was, it is unlike any creature I've ever seen. Some said in the comments this was a chupacabra. Others say it was an alien. What do you think? If you're enjoying today's video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification so that you get notified every time a new scary video like this drops in the future. Uh, climb the tree hill. I don't know. Apparently people are stupid. Let's see. strange sounds coming out of a dark, deep forest ground, <gasps> and even some wildlife encounters you won't forget. Hey, come here. Get out of here. These are a few of the things we will look at, so stick to the end. In this video, a man is walking through the woods during the daytime when he suddenly notices something unusual. The footage starts off shaky because the man is trying to locate the creature he saw with his camera. After a moment, 
he manages to quickly on two legs among the trees. As if it's trying to hide from the camera's view, this creature looks similar to what many people call Bigfoot. It moves with speed, weaving between the trees, and appears to be very aware of its surroundings, possibly trying to avoid being seen. The brown fur of the creature helps it blend into the forest, making it hard to keep track of. This video raises some questions for me. Was the creature just crossing the forest, or was it really hiding from the man? Could it be Bigfoot? Is there some other explanation for the brown, furry being in the woods? What do you think? I tend to believe that one. I mean, people... I don't think people understand that for there to be a Bigfoot, there must therefore be other Bigfoots and possibly adolescent Bigfoots. So, it, it could happen. In this video, a man is filming because he found something very strange on a rock near the water. It's not just any rock decoration. He sees something that looks like a bunch of chains. The thing is kind of jelly-like, and you can almost see through it. It's even moving and pulsating as if it's alive. At one point, it looks like one part of this vein network grows new branches right in front of the camera. This makes me wonder, is this thing actually alive? It's behaving like something you'd expect to be living, growing, and moving in such an unusual way. It might be some kind of water creature, or something I certainly have never seen before. What is this mysterious thing? If you know what it is, leave a comment. As we're looking through the lens of a surveillance camera set up outside a house, it's really dark, so the video isn't very clear, and we can mostly see just shadows. It's hard to make out the details of the surroundings, but there's something that really catches our eye. A creepy, dark, humanoid figure lurking in the shadows, with eyes that glow in the night. Interestingly, we can't see the lower half of its body at all. It's as if the figure is just the upper half of a person or creature. Then, suddenly, the figure moves and vanishes almost as if it realized someone might have seen it. This quick disappearance adds to the mystery of what it could be. Could this figure be something supernatural? Or is there a simpler explanation? The glowing eyes and the way it disappears make me wonder if we've just seen something from beyond our normal understanding. Could it be a glitch? Or there is something out there that we have never noticed? as we're brought into a scene that's not something you see every day. Filmed from a boat by a person among a group of others, the camera captures a truly special moment in the water. They've encountered a whale, a magnificent creature of the sea, which appears to welcome their approach. As the boat draws nearer, the whale gracefully surfaces, coming close enough to allow the people on the boat an incredible opportunity to reach out and pet it. This interaction is a rare and touching display of trust and curiosity from the whale, offering a moment of connection between humans and one of the ocean's most majestic inhabitants. This video truly warms my heart and makes me realize how extraordinary nature is. In this eerie video, it's not so much what we see that captures our attention, but what we hear filmed by someone at night near the edge of a forest. The person uses a flashlight to light up different parts of the forest entrance. But why are they doing this? The reason becomes clear when you listen. These aren't just any screams. They're the kind that make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. The person filming is trying to see if they can spot whatever is making these sounds by shining their flashlight into the forest. But it's the sound that really stands out in this video. What could be making these creepy noises? Is it an animal known for making such sounds? A person in distress? Or something entirely unknown? In this fascinating video, we witness a rare and extraordinary natural phenomenon that's both strange and captivating. The scene unfolds on a lake 
where the ice covering its surface undergoes an incredible transformation. Instead of the solid, smooth ice we might expect, the entire surface appears to have been composed of hundreds of thousands of icicles, closely bound together as if they were glued to one another. Suddenly, this tightly interlocked icy surface begins to disintegrate, separating into thousands of individual icicles. It's a mesmerizing sight. Watching these icicles break apart and reveal their distinct forms, each one a unique piece of the larger whole that once blanketed the lake. I have never seen anything like this before. Have you? Is there an explanation for this phenomenon? If you are enjoying this so far, consider subscribing. It really helps me keep this channel going. This video will give you the chills captured by a surveillance camera overlooking the garden in front of a house. We're given a glimpse into an eerie occurrence that unfolds on the garden's central pathway leading to the house. Initially, the footage shows a seemingly normal scene with people walking along the alley, going about the Hmm. Well, the problem with open water is Yeah, I can't do open water because, like, I have a horrible fear of that. Because, like, while we know some of what's in the ocean, we can't possibly know all of it. And I feel like megalodons still exist. And those things are terrifying. And if those don't exist, something bigger does. And have you ever seen a whale? Those things are massive. And they've accidentally swallowed people before. Uh, yeah, exactly. And exactly. Like, people go out in the ocean on kayaks, okay, which are essentially uh, bath toys for sharks, <laughs> but only bath toys that happen to carry food in them because they will eat you. Um, Essentially, what you're doing is putting yourself in a bath toy for sea creatures. And people completely forget about killer whales. And whales, you don't hear about it on the news, but whales do tip over boats all the time. Like, it happens so so often like people have no idea how frequently that actually happens where a boat will be capsized because a whale came to surface and accidentally toppled the boat over and people don't realize how massive whales really are and, and forget the whales, but uh, what about sharks? Great whites have been known to attack boats and sink them intentionally because great whites are insanely territorial. And if you get into a great white's territory, they will capsize your boat. They will bite your boat. They will ram your boat. And if you're in a kayak and piss one off, you are screwed, my friend. Yeah, people have no idea how many boats whales fuck up. And that's not to mention uh, orca whales, you know, killer whales, are notorious for sinking boats. 
and after they sink the boats, they eat the people. Orcas are a hundred times more dangerous than great whites because they will sink your kayak intentionally to get you out of it and eat you. People think, oh, how cute a killer whale. No, they aren't cute. They are predators. Have you ever seen them eat a seal? Have you ever seen them hunting seals? Do you know what people look like in swimsuits in the ocean? They look like seals. So you damn skippy. A whale, a killer whale will chase down your kayak to get you out of it. And seals have a bad habit of hopping on kayaks. And that's just the creatures we know about. We haven't even started on the creatures we don't know whether or not they're in their seal or not. Um, like megalodons or things worse than megalodons. You, you don't know. I mean, there are so many undiscovered species in the ocean. They found great whites with massive chunks missing out of them. They have found great white sharks bitten in half up to their head and the rest, all that was left of the great white was the head. Something big enough to bite off all but the head of a great white? No thank you. Yeah, no thank you. I will stay on land. Thank you very much. This ...and then leaving the area. However, what happens next is far from ordinary. After the people have left, the camera captures an astonishing sight. A translucent... humanoid figure appears resembling the ghost of a little girl wearing a dress moves with a haunting grace along the path where the previous visitors had just walked the ghostly apparition is not entirely clear given its translucent nature adding to the eerie and unsettling atmosphere of the video could this be a lingering spirit retracing old steps or is it a rational explanation for what we just saw maybe the family that lived there In this video, we see a street that's underwater because of a flood. A car is trying to move forward on a part of the street where the water isn't so deep. But there's a surprise waiting for them. Ocodile is swimming around right there in the water. It's a strange and a bit scary to see a crocodile so close to where people live, just swimming in the flood water on the street. It's unusual to see wild animals, especially crocodiles, so close to human spaces. These creatures terrify me. It looks like nothing scares them at all, given the fact that they get so close to humans. Maybe the nature is trying to tell us something. Maybe it raises a sign of alarm for us, but we keep ignoring it. These encounters are not normal. Those are just swamp puppies who need a home. Look how cute. Don't you want to adopt him? I want to take him home. It's a sweet little shop poppy. These scenes are pretty sad to watch as we see a huge crocodile that has been captured and is being restrained by five men. Despite the strength of these five men trying their best to keep the crocodile still, the animal shows its incredible power by managing to move and roll showcasing its strength. What's really striking about this scene, aside from the struggle, is the sheer size of the crocodile, much larger than a normal crocodile. This scene can evoke a range of emotions, from awe at the crocodile's strength and size to sadness over the situation it finds itself in, bound and controlled by humans. It's so sad what humans can do. Oh no! Fuck those people, man.
Those are horrible people. Like, I get it. Crocodiles are dangerous, and you don't want them in your village, but you can relocate them. It was a big puppy, and they were being mean to it. Man, fuck those people. They should have just relocated it, dude. That was uncalled for. Hey, Lisa. Like, I get it. The crocodiles are dangerous. But that was unnecessary. Like, they could have relocated that crocodile. They didn't have to do that. That was cruel. In this unsettling video, we're shown footage taken by a man from the safety of his own home late at night. It's dark outside, but the video captures something truly eerie, what appears to be a child banging on the door with their hands. The man filming even manages to get a shot of the child's face, adding to the tension of the moment. However, the creepiness escalates when the man decides to open the door. Despite the clear sounds of banging and the visual evidence of someone, or something, outside there's a shocking twist. When the door swings open, there's nobody there. The space outside the door, where just moments before, a child seemed to be urgently trying to get in, is now completely empty. This video gives me the chills. There is no way the child could have ran away as the man opened the door really quick. I still hope there is a lot of explanation for what we have just seen. This video is really gross and may not be for the faint-hearted. It shows a sink drain, which is in a state of neglect and quite dirty. What makes this video particularly gross is that there appears to be a creature trying to make its way out of the drain. Given the condition of the sink and the glimpses of the creature we see, it's reasonable to speculate that the animal struggling to emerge is a rat. I am disgusted by this video, and I am sure I could not live in a house where there are rats emerging from the pipes. In this video, we witness a scene that starts off quite ordinary, but takes an unexpected turn. A woman is outside her house, busily clearing snow from the ground with a shovel. It's a common winter activity, and everything seems calm and routine. However, the situation quickly changes. Suddenly, a massive amount of snow tumbles down from the roof of the house. It happens so fast that the woman doesn't have time to move out of the way. She is knocked down by the avalanche of snow and in moments, the entire front yard of the house is buried under the snow that has cascaded from above. Poor woman. Even if at first this video make me laugh, I don't want to be in her shoes. She must be feeling awful. This video takes us into a chilling scenario, filmed by a guy and his friend as they explore an unknown dark location with only a flashlight to guide them. The atmosphere is tense, filled with eerie noises that echo in the background, adding to the sense of unease. As they move through the darkness, the light from the flashlight reveals something unsettling on the ground. A cross that appears to be either drawn or formed from the debris scattered across the floor. This discovery alone is enough to send shivers down your spine. But the video takes an even creepier turn. Later in the night, the friends capture something truly alarming on camera. Hey, kiss that. Oh, shoot, shoot, no! oh, shoot, shoot! Just get out of the house! They zoom in on a gray humanoid creature with a bald head, this creature 
isn't just sitting there. It makes terrifying noises, almost like screams, which adds to the horror of the situation. The sight of this creature and its haunting screams are enough to terrify anyone. Understandably, the boys are scared by this encounter. The footage abruptly ends as they react to the terrifying sight and sounds of the creature. I would have personally ran away as quick as possible after even hearing those noises. Those boys were brave and naive. But I can't keep wondering, what was that? It looked like no creature that I have heard of in the folklore. In this video, captured from the unique viewpoint of a door visor, we witness a tense and unexpected encounter on a quiet street. A woman is seen walking her dog, both appearing calm and unaware of the potential danger lurking just a few feet behind them. This predator's presence on a residential street is alarming and adds an immediate sense of urgency to the scene. As soon as the woman becomes aware of the coyote's interest in them, her instincts kick in. She quickly picks up her dog trying to protect it by holding it in her arms and looks for a place to hide. The person watching through the door visor doesn't just stay behind the safety of their door. Instead, they step out of their house, putting themselves at risk to help. They attempt to distract the coyote, drawing its attention away from the woman and her dog. Meanwhile, they call out to the woman, offering her and her pet shelter until the coyote leaves and the danger has passed. You can come inside if you want. Luckily, where I live, I don't see these animals very often. I would be terrified by this encounter. The woman managed the situation very well, remaining calm. In this video, we're brought into a dark and unsettling setting, seemingly filmed from inside a boiler room or a similar dimly lit enclosed space. The atmosphere is tense, filled with the sounds of metal banging which could be anything from the echo of machinery to something far less explainable. As the man filming navigates this eerie environment, his camera picks up something truly chilling. You gotta come out. Amidst the shadows, he captures what appears to be a humanoid figure. But this is no ordinary sighting. The figure is a black shadow, suggesting it could be something supernatural, like a poltergeist. This shadowy presence in such a foreboding setting adds a layer of horror to the video. This video plunges us into a nightmare scenario where the boundary be between the physical world and the unknown seems to blur. The man seemed terrified by the creature given his screams, and personally, I would be terrified too. If you got so far in the video, it means you're a dedicated viewer. Thank you. And if you subscribe and hit the bell button, I promise to keep posting these for you to enjoy. Captured from the perspective of a doorbell camera, this video makes us witness a startling and tense encounter right on the doorstep of a house. The footage shows a cat seemingly at ease on the porch of the house when suddenly the calm is shattered, the coyote approaches and then attacks the unsuspecting cat, sparking a frantic struggle between the two animals. The presence of the coyote so close to human habitation raises questions. What was the coyote doing there in the first place? Coyotes venturing into residential areas isn't uncommon, as their habitats often overlap with urban and suburban environments. In this video, we're shown a series of clips from various surveillance cameras inside a restaurant, each capturing an extraordinary and chaotic event. A deer, an unexpected visitor, has somehow found its way into the restaurant, leading to a frenzy of activity. As the deer moves through the establishment, its confusion and fear are palpable, causing it to dash frantically from one room to another. Throughout the footage, we can see the deer knocking over tables, scattering chairs, and generally causing havoc as it tries to find its way out. The animal's sudden appearance and unpredictable movements create a tense atmosphere, not just for the deer, but also for the customers and staff present. People Dude. <laughs> Oh 
<laughs> uh, like, I feel like Wendigos, like, masquerade as pets sometimes. I look, ghost videos. The spirit. It's no secret that ghosts are simply lost wandering souls, unaware that they've passed and often burdened with unfinished business. So it's no surprise that tragedies like war could cause an upsurge in ghostly activity. This might explain the creepy video footage about to see. Captured on a CCTV camera, a mysterious white thing appears on the left side of the screen. It quickly floats to the right past four unsuspecting women. The mysterious white thing then disappears into thin air. YouTube viewers believe this to be a ghost caught on camera, but what do you think? Real ghost or something else? Let me know down below. If you're a fan of scary videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. Who is that? I found this next entry in the Facebook group, Paranormal Sighting. Uploaded by you, Kusela Medi. Kusela says that while home alone watching The Hobbit, he decided to take a picture of his newly renovated room and send it to a friend. This is the photo he sent. So he was home alone watching me. Because, I mean, to be fair, he said watching The Hobbit. And I am kind of a hobbit. I'm like not even five foot tall. So the guy was home alone watching me. And he saw something on his footage that scared him that wasn't me. Apparently I'm scary. People are watching me from their home videos. At first, the photo looks normal. However, if we enhance it, someone can be seen stood in the doorway. But Kusela says he was alone. So who is it? Facebook users have been left arguing in the comments on just who this figure standing in the doorway could be, with many suggesting that it looks like a person dressed in war uniform or a long coat and a tricorn hat. Others suggest there looks like... Oh, hell, hell, hell no. Because they're not just one of those people, there are two of them. You're missing a whole ass person on the left side there, buddy. There are two people in your doorway, and you, you, my friend, are fucked. Yeah, there's not, yeah, you're fucked. Say your prayers, do, do what you do, you're fucked. There's two figures in the photo, but I can't see it myself. Maybe you can, though. Regardless, this creepy image has really kicked up a debate in the Paranormal Sightings Facebook group. But is this a ghost? You tell me. The Apparition This next ghost video comes from the Paranormal Investigation channel Dark Arts TV Extra Carl ventures out to the Brinksway Tunnels located in Stockport, England The tunnels were built in the late 1930s and used as a bomb shelter during World War II. Just one year after the tunnels were completed, Stockport suffered heavy bombings. Many people had to run down to the tunnels to survive. In the video, Carl embarks on a lone exploration of these tunnels, or at least he thought he was. Yo, this is very, this is eerie. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep going. We keep going, see what, see where we go to. I know this is probably not a wise idea that I'm walking off on my own and stuff, but I don't know. This is weird. It's all blocked off again. Right, I definitely can't hear anyone now. Right. 
Um. Yo, what the f is that? Um. Hello. Um. No. Hello. Just as I was approaching the corner, I had an overwhelming feeling as if I wasn't alone. As I turned the corner, I could see what I thought to be a silhouette moving up the tunnel. On review, we can clearly see what seems to be a black figure with a yellow outline. We believe that this is possibly a spirit. Let us know what your thoughts are on this. This is weird. Right, I'm literally on my own in these tunnels. Dude, do you not hear that? You're clearly not alone. You need to get out. And why, sir, why is it that you're not noticing the tiny little eyeballs all over the end of the tunnel? There are about a hundred little beady eyes staring at you on the floor and around the corner. What is wrong with you? I count like 30 eyeballs glaring off your flashlight right now. This is really weird because I've just literally come around the corner and no joking. I think I might have seen like a silhouette or something. As Carl peers round a corner, a silhouette of someone or something quickly appears at the end of the tunnel before he disappears into nothingness. Carl says that this is, quote, real paranormal evidence, ghost captured on camera, in secret, haunted underground. And his viewers believe this to be the case. But what do you think? Is this a ghost caught on camera? Let me know. The Lighthouse Church. This next ghost video comes from the popular paranormal investigation channel Paranormal Nightmare TV series. Josh, Rocky and Sean investigate the Lighthouse Church in Lynn, Indiana, which carries a haunting connection to a notorious figure, Jim Jones. Known for leading a cult known as the People's Temple, Jones orchestrated a tragic event in Jonestown, Guyana that sent shockwaves around the world. He convinced his followers to drink a deadly concoction, leading to a massive loss of lives. And if anyone refused, it didn't go well for them. A few managed to escape the horrifying scene by running into the wilderness. But sadly, the majority, 918 people, were not so fortunate. Now, this old church didn't directly witness these events, but its ties to Jones run deep. It was his childhood church, and since that horrifying event, whispers of hauntings have echoed in its hallways. The ghost hunters spent two nights inside the church, documenting everything they could find. And this is what they found. Oh, Don't. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cuss. Thank you for talking to me. Would you like to tell me what your name is? Jim. Jim and he... Lord. Lord. Said Jim and then said Lord. Oh my goodness. While attempting to communicate, Sean is shocked when a noise makes him jump. The word that is picked up is don't. He apologises for cursing and asks for the entity's name and bizarrely, he responds with the name Jim. While this was happening upstairs, Josh was down in the basement doing his own investigation alone. So... Who wants to do Spirit Talker app while we're out in the middle of the forest? In an unknown area. Um, with unknown entities. Put a one in the chat if you want to do the Spirit Talker app.
Hmm. Okay. Why not? Here we go. Oh, God, this is going to be so... Okay. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm letting you guys talk me into this. I feel like I'm going to regret it. I am, I'm still camping, Shelly. I don't go home until tomorrow. Um, tomorrow evening. Um, I have snacks. I have a fruit punch flavored, uh, Grogu gummy. And it came with a little frog gummy. And then I've got the little, uh, chocolate roosters. I've got Rice Krispie Treats Peeps. I've got, um, uh, what else? Chips. I've got sour cream and onion chips. Get into the app. <clears throat> okay, spirits. I'm opening a spirit talker app where you can talk only good, loving, light. Peaceful spirits may communicate. Um, evil, malevolent, malignant, dark spirits are not welcome here at all. They're not welcome here or around me or near me. None of it. I do not consent. You are not welcome. Only good, loving, and light spirits may communicate. I'm turning you on now. Okay, it's on. We shall see what it sounds. I don't know that it will communicate um, with the chat. Is there... Five. This five. It's a weird way to start a conversation. Five what? I'll throw something. No, please don't. Nothing breakable, at least. Please don't do that. Well, that's an intense way to start off a conversation. <laughs> Hi, right, I'll, I'll throw something. Okay, well, <laughs> hello to you too. Just Taylor. Taylor. Who's Taylor? This is Shelly's fault, by the way. I want it documented that this is Shelly's fault. So let the record show that this is Shelly's fault. Is everyone here clear that it is indeed Shelly's fault?
Good. We're all in agreement. And I'll have the hiccups. <laughs> Fuck! I'll stop playing videos and I get the hiccups where I can't hide them by playing videos. Oh, Nancy. Oh, shit. You know the house ghost, Nancy? <laughs> I know if it starts communicating with the chat that one of my house spirits came with me. Wealthy. Who's wealthy? I'm not wealthy. Intense. Holy shit. What did I say at the very beginning of this? I said that's an intense way to start off a conversation. And it I'm just, making noise. I hear that. It's a very loud noise. I said that's an intense way to start off a conversation, and it just said intense. <clears throat> Albert. Holy crap, it said Albert. I'm hiding. Why are you hiding? It said Albert. That's another name we get at the house. Is Albert. Why? I'm not sure. Some of you may or may not remember that when I do this at home, it says Albert. So I don't know if it's the same Albert that it's talking about or a different one. Apparently, I didn't know that was a thing that they could do. I understand you. That's comforting. I'm glad somebody does. I'm over here. Why? Why, Shelly? Like, uh... Assault. Assault. 
Okay, it says I'm over here. I'm hiding. I'm over here. And then it said assault. Were you assaulted? Is that what you were telling me? Are you hiding because someone hurt you? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me someone hurt you? Someone assaulted you? Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. Probably because of me and the people covering him. Because he's been reading really hard um, at me and Kaiju, so that probably got him a lot of attention because of all the craziness. Emotional. Okay, so you're emotional. Um, were you assaulted? Is I don't, I'm not understanding. Good. Spirit. Oh, okay. I'm sorry that you were hurt, Spirit. I'm sorry someone did that to you. That's not okay. You shouldn't have to hide. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't deserve it. Nobody deserves to be assaulted. And I can understand why you're emotional. And I'm sorry that happened to you. Shot. I'm really sorry. Were you shot too? Did they assault you and then shoot you? Is that what happened? I had a bad past. That's not an excuse. For someone to do that to you. You may have had a bad past. But it's not an excuse for someone to hurt you. Sir. She shouts. Can you hear that banging noise or is it just me? I keep hearing a bang and then footsteps.
Margaret. Who's Margaret? Is that the one who shouts? I passed peacefully. That's good. No. Fifteen. I'm going to uh, hide the snacks and make sure that McLean gets my snacks. Because Shelly's a meanie head. Oh, yeah, and I got some more of those, uh, those Lindor truffles that are blueberries and cream. You know, the, the creamy white chocolate. I was killed. With blueberries and creams, you know, Lindor chocolate. Yeah, it's blueberries and cream. Cobbler. They're delicious. <clears throat> Grace. Grace. Okay, spirits, I'm going to say goodbye for now. I'm going to close this door. All spirits must go now. I'm Be closing. very, very careful. I am. I am closing this door. Goodbye. Um, all spirits must leave. You are not welcome to stay. You are not welcome here. You must leave. Any and all spirits must leave. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to go back to watching some stuff. And I'm going to pull up a different video real quick. And after the scary one. We're going to watch Andrew Ditch's newest conundrum. 
We know Jim Jones came here for many years. As a child, then he moved on and became a reverend at different churches. And then they did some very bad things. Jim. Whoa! Holy. So because I'm here to buck. Okay, that was loud. Josh asks any spirits that might be listening if they remember Jim Jones visiting the church. Initially, the answer he receives is no, but then someone says the name Jim. Rocky is also on his own, standing behind the podium in the church hall, conducting his own investigations. What makes this piece of evidence so much more compelling? Watch as the phone is lifted up and slammed down at the exact same time the EDI alerts Rocky to a spirit being present. As Rocky is wondering whether he should move to another part of the church, the EDI lights up, indicating the presence of a spirit. But before he even has a chance to look at the light, a phone on the podium lifts up and slams down all by itself right next to him. Meanwhile, Okay, so we're going to go watch this Andrew Ditch video. There's two of them. And then we're going to get back to the ghost content for a little bit. because I'm here to buy a paying customer. You know what? You're also still in violation of Andrew Cuomo's law to my AEC app. You want to, uh, executive order 202.34. No, 202.34. E X E C U T I V E O R D E R. Continuing temporary suspension and modification of laws related to the disaster emergency. Whereas on March 7, 2020. Good, I'm calling to get your discriminating against me. And he's told by my lawyer. I don't have that option having food stamps, ma'am. Now for food stamps. Andy needs uh, police here. Andy is uh, being discriminated by uh, the 7-Eleven staff. Andy has a medical condition, and I can't tolerate masks, and she's yelling and hurting my ears. I have autism. Where, where are you? I'm at 7-Eleven. You're at the 7-Eleven? Yes, and Andy has the executive law number uh, trying to show her that Andy has, that uh, that I have a legal right to ha medically tolerable. And Andy's okay. putting this on YouTube, this, this discrimination that I'm going through with her. Okay, what is your name? Andrew Ditch. Andrew Ditch, okay. All right, we're getting help right Under executive order uh, number 202-4. He has a legal right um, to have, uh, if medically untolerable, autism. Okay. All right, we're going to get some help right over for you, sir. Okay, thank you. Listen to this mouth breather. Like, listen to him. He's mouth breathing like a lunatic. He's going <laughs> so mad because that lady said, get the hell out of her store. 
He's una he's unable to comprehend though, guys. You know, he's so you know helpless that he can't comprehend things. But he knows what laws to quote to harass people. He can certainly quote the laws that help him harass people. You know, he's so helpless though, can't help himself. But he can he can harass you, and you can't do anything about it. Because only Andrew has rights. Only Andrew, you know, nobody else has rights. Nobody else has rights to their safety. Nobody else has rights to, you know, anything. It's only Andrew who has rights. Okay, y'all need to get this straight. Y'all seem to be confusing everything because you think you have rights. When it's only Andrew, only Andrew has rights. Only Andrew can get mad. Only Andrew can get upset because the only person on earth that matters is Andrew. Like, you guys don't seem to understand that. Like, why can you not understand that? That Andrew is the only victim ever. Like, what is wrong with you people? Why, why, why can you not understand that only Andrew has rights? I just don't understand how you don't get it. How do you not get it? Like, why are you not understanding this? You know why you're not understanding it? Because it's fucking ridiculous. That's why. It was. Discrimination that's going on YouTube, ma'am. I don't like that. You don't like that she's making you follow a law that literally everyone else had to follow. Oh, my God. It's only you that she's asking to wear a mask when it's really, like, it's literally mandated by the president of the entire U.S. But no, she's totally picking on just you. I am absolutely convinced that Andrew made it a point to go into places of business without a mask on just so he can pitch fits about being autistic and just so he could get special treatment because of his fake autism. I am absolutely 100% convinced that Andrew targeted these public places 
just so he could say he was being harassed and discriminated on, you know, because God forbid people have rules and standards and codes of conduct everyone has to follow. You know, I'm absolutely convinced he would go into these stores, go into these public places, knowing he was supposed to be wearing a mask, but refusing to do so, so he can cry victim because of his fake autism, because he knew he could get attention that way. I'm convinced that's what he did. I'm convinced that's what happened here. He went in there and went full well. He, he should have been wearing a mask. And he wanted special treatment, and she didn't give it to him. So Katie bar the doors. He's calling the cops because he didn't get special treatment because of his fake autism. I'm also 100% convinced that Andrew seeks out confrontation. I'm convinced he seeks out arguments. I'm convinced he seeks out conflict with people because that is the only way he can get attention. I'm convinced he creates these situations for himself so that he can get attention because he knows that if he creates conflict, he creates an argument, and it escalates, which who will make sure it does, he can call the cops and get all the attention. I'm convinced he calls the cops for attention. And then he goes out and he causes situations intentionally just so he can call the cops on people because that is the only way anyone will give attention to this pathetic piece of shit. Otherwise, he's just a sad sack of shit nobody wants to interact with. He will legitimately seek out altercations for attention. I've seen him do it. This right here is him seeking out an altercation for attention. This is absolutely attention-getting behavior, attention-seeking behavior. He goes in the store knowing the rules, and determined to break them because he demands special treatment. And when it's not given to him, he creates an altercation so that he can call the law and bully them with the law so that he can say he's right, he's, he's autism, he's fake autism that he doesn't have. You know, he bullies people with it because he's an asshole. Section 66 minus 3.2 face coverings. Any person who is over age 2 and able to medically tolerate a face covering shall be required to cover their nose and mouth with a mask or face social distance. I am not going to uh, tolerate you, sir. You do have to talk to me. What? You do have to talk to me. Why? Because I hear you making statements of wanting to... I am want your lieutenant, sir. Sir? I am going to file a 58 hearing, sir. Officer Hutt, 
uh, to, uh, to, I do not need to unlawful t- uh, detainment, seizures, or uh, to, uh, searches. If you follow me, I will have you addressed. I'm on my way. If you follow me, I will have you addressed. A oh, bullshit. He is not the only person with all, he 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 behaves like he's the person who invented autism. He did not. He doesn't even have autism. And people with autism absolutely can be bullies. That's a lot of shit. He bullies people with his fake autism. And he just told that officer, if you follow me, I will have you addressed it. What is addressed it, you imbecile? You're going to walk all the way to the police Yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, because I'm following criminal charges against you. Okay, perfect. So my question, Andy, is on your way to the station, will you be walking into traffic like you told this guy? Uh, I don't have to answer for that under my phone, right? For the minute, right, I'm at. And uh, the answer is no. So if you want to harass me just to try to deprive me my right to file charges against you, leave me uh, alone, please. Okay. Is that I'm walking, and actually, I'm going to ask you, can you get your lieutenant so Andy don't have to cross streets, so I'm not deprived to get legal right? Are you thinking about hurting yourself? No. Actually, I'm in it, so I can call a civil I know you're being funny, McQueen. I'm just saying that that's legitimately what he believes. You're right. He really does believe that just because he fakes autism, he can't be a bully. But he is a bully. He bullies people with his fake disabilities. Do you want to come up here, uh, McQueen? If you want to come on panel, I'll drop a link. I mean, he's such a dick. And something to eat. Andy, it's a private, it's a private facility. If I want your lieutenant, you, sir. If they say that you have to wear a mask. You have to wear a mask. Uh, I want your lieutenant. Right, yes, sir. Not... Andy, want you really? T- Why well, weren't you uh, throwing out the third person when you were talking a while ago? Because you just said I. You can't go from talking in third person to talking regular. Because people who refer to themselves in third person don't flip flop in between Andrew. You are a fraud. You are infuriating. And I hate you. There you are. Hey. Where's Panda? I want you to know that you that I'm autistic, so I can't bully people. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about changing my name for Andrew Ditch for that one. <laughs> Holy shit. I was dead. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> but that's the way he acts, though. It is. It's infuriating. Like can do, yeah, no. Andy can do no wrong purely because he says he has autism. Oh. I need that video of that lady telling him that he doesn't have autism. I'm going to play that damn thing on fucking repeat until he goes absolutely mad. Oh, he acts Next like time he's in chat. Start playing it. Yeah, I will. And like, 
he acts like people with autism can't bully people. Bullshit. It happens all the time. But the only thing is, he doesn't have autism and he still bullies people with autism. Right. Like. I hope he goes to jail on this one. He won't because he has like plot armor or something like Daniel Larson. And if I get hit by a car, it's a lawsuit. He has blubber armor. I mean, that too. But, like, Andy's done so many things that would get, like, a normal person arrested. Like, what's going on here? McQueen? Why? Why is he not being held accountable? Why are they not putting him in jail? Why are they letting him do this shit? They wouldn't. I don't know. Anyone else, they'd be in jail. All the false police reports, all the false accusations. All I mean, why? Like, I I get there's something wrong with him mentally, but normally that wouldn't excuse this type of behavior. In the law's eyes, he's clearly um, cognizant, cognizant enough to understand what he's doing. Oh yeah, he know he knows what's going on. I'm talking like delusions, mental problems, not like um. I'm not sure they are delusions, McQueen. I believe he knows exactly what he's doing. I believe that he is a fake and a farce. I believe... Oh, no, I'm talking about, like, other people. Like, if they're delusional and having, like, a meltdown where they're not in this reality and they keep calling the cops like this, they're going to get charged. They are. Or put put in the hospital. Yeah. They're going to get charged or they're going to get locked up in a psych unit. But they they allow him to physically assault police officers, uh, medical staff, EMTs, his parents. Fuck, he poisoned his parents at least three times that we know of. And yep. He's filed hundreds, if not thousands, of false police reports on the police. Like, any normal human would be in jail for this, but somehow Andy has, like, the plot armor or something that Daniel Larson has. And he's... Neither of them are going to jail. (laughs) It's not right. It's they not. aren't helping him. They think they're helping him, but they aren't helping him. They're enabling him. And that's helping him. Absolutely. No and Andrew's like an actual danger to people. So I there there were some wild hand gestures you didn't see, but <laughs> I don't I don't know what's going on with the law there. I I don't get it. It it makes me livid because what are they gonna say when he really does hurt someone? What are they gonna say when he eventually poisons his dad and does it wrong and his dad dies or his brother dies or his mother dies? Or some random person in a restaurant dies because he went and slipped something in their food. Or some parents um, want answers for why he weren't arrested years ago and done something with before he kidnapped 
their child. Yeah, or God forbid, there's like a scuffle at the playground with the parent that asked him to leave. Like, oh, well, I'm... He dodged another police officer, and that police officer's family need some answers as to why their family was done something to because he docks them. Yeah. Like, I, I know for a fact that if a parent asks him to leave the playground, he's going to have a meltdown. Like, I can feel it in my bones. Then he's going to call the cops on them and say they're discriminating against him because he had autism. You're discriminating against me because I have autism. You're an internet bully because you're saying I'm a pedophile. I'm I'm not I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> I just like watching kids. I come here. I just like watching and smelling kids children. children even though <laughs> I want them to pee and poo in diapers and let me clean it up, and they won't let me because they're discriminating against me because I have autism. <laughs> yeah, no, I. They won't let me. Watch poo and be in a diaper. Yeah, they won't let me creepily stare at their children while they're at the park. That's discrimination. Right. Fuck it. Fuck him, man. Like, I'm, I'm not a parent. And I understand that I would be asked uh, to leave the park if I would. I mean, my basic right oh. under... Oh, hi, Andy. Oh, shit. Look, 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 look. <laughs> you were breaking the rules in this video. There was a mask mandate when this was posted, my guy. If you got COVID, you could have killed your whole damn family. But it doesn't matter because only Andrew matters. He doesn't yeah, care. only Andrew matters. It doesn't matter if he kills his whole whole family as long as he's comfortable. Yeah, don't you know, McQueen, that Andrew is the only disabled person on the planet? Don't you know, Andrew is the only victim ever? Don't you? Yes, know my apologies. How could I forget? Andrew is the only person who's ever been bullied for his fake autism. Don't you know he's the only victim ever? Andrew, you're going into a store for like five seconds. You can wear a mask. You're We're not making fun of your autism because you don't have autism. There was a specialist who told you you don't have autism. So stop faking autism, Andrew. You don't have it. And if you had sensory issues, you wouldn't be able to stand rock concerts or strong smells. Certainly not to the point that you can dump an entire bottle of freaking oils into your diffuser to the point your mother could not breathe. You self-centered, narcissistic, sociopathic son of a bitch. So take your fake autism that you don't have and get out of my chat. Bye. Or like, and come on panel. panel. Unless you're going to come up on panel, get out of my chat. We're not going to have an argument in text form. You're going to come up here or you're going to get off my chat. Go ahead and finish your thought, McQueen. He's not here unless he is um, on panel. Uh, yeah, no, I don't remember what I was going to say. You're not a parent. 
You said you're not a parent. Oh, I'm not a parent. So I, I understand that if I were to go to a playground when, like, kids were there, I'd be asked to leave. Understandably so, because, you know, I'm, I'm a dude at the playground with no children. You would have no business there. Nope. Unless uh, waiting until you knew for a fact that school was out and all the children would be there at the time you just so happened to pick to go. That's, that's not it. No. If you were not targeting kids, if you were not seeking out children, you would have went at a time that children would have been in school and not occupying the playground. So don't know that that's not going to fly here. Yeah, no, there are like dead times for playgrounds where there is like nobody there. Why don't you go then? Like, if you want to swing and play on the playground so badly, why don't you wait until all the kids are gone? With sensory issues, kids are loud. You don't want to be around kids. Like, wouldn't that hurt your ears? No, because he would actually have to have autism for that to hurt his ears. I know, I'm just bringing up examples and why it's stupid that he's at a playground. Yeah. And then stalking middle schools. (laughs) And uh, he goes to the guitar shop to play on their guitars and drum sets. His dad says, and he has a guitar and he has a sound system and he has recording equipment and he has all this musical stuff but he can't handle loud stuff right no no he he has sensory issues guys but goes to rock concerts multiple rock concerts and hangs out at parks while there's children there that run around and scream while they play did you see how excited he got when he played that clip of the kids screaming and hollering right like like there was a eerie excitement to his face please stay away from like, children andy <laughs> like a not pure kind of excitement you get what i'm saying yeah like the pedo kind of excitement yeah, I, I, I get it. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. All right, I'm going to play. Cross the street safely, and I'm asking for you to keep me safe so I have the plane. Or are you afraid to do, uh, to file uh, from the file ch- additional charges of two, Article 18, USC 242? Two police misconduct, depriving me uh, disability uh, uh, denial. I can guarantee you that I'm not worried about whatever charges you're going to file against me. That's can I have you there, please? Uh, didn't you already talk to him? No, he wouldn't even t- pick up the phone. Oh, probably because your complaint is unjustifiable. It's not unjustifiable. Listen, Andy has listen. a right to file listen. a complaint. Under the reason the law. I'm here is to find out. I want your yourself. lieutenant, sir. Are you going to hurt yourself? No, I want your lieutenant. Are you going to walk into traffic? If Andy has to walk Why? to... We advise if I have to walk to your state and Andy of judgment, Andy's going to file your... If you have a disability of judgment, that's my disability, by the way. Stop making up disabilities that don't exist. If you really have a judgment disability, Andrew, how do you know that your judgment is sound enough to be filing reports? How do you know that it's sound enough that you need to call the police? How do you know your judgment is sound on any of the decisions you're making right now if you have that disability, huh? It's only sound when it's convenient for you, isn't it? Hmm. Isn't that odd, McQueen? 
Yeah, no, he can only tell right from wrong when he's he's the one being wronged. But he is also allowed to do those things onto other people, so you know. Oh, but he has a judgment disability. So Yeah, he can't he can't judge what those things have been done to him, that have been done to him are wrong, even though he didn't like it. But he can't make sound judgments on whether or no. not to file police reports. Though, if he don't have judgment. If he was truly as low-functioning as he said he was, he wouldn't be able to communicate the laws he's trying to bring up so clearly. No, he's researched it because he's he's a professional lawsuit. Uh, chaser. He's one of them fucking sovereign citizens, almost. He he goes around researching lawsuits he can file and trying to uh, farm that lawsuit, you know, create the altercation that would make the lawsuit possible. Only problem is he's creating the issue. Therefore, he can't file the lawsuit if he is creating the issue. Hmm. A judgment disability. Is there a disability called judgment? I mean... No. No, there's not. Bad judgment disability? That's, that's not a... A legitimate disability that is a made up on the spot disability is what that is. Yeah. That's uh I wanna get away with my bullshit, so I'm just making shit up off the top of my head. Disability. Kinda like his uh can uh what do you call it? The Tourette's he only has when he feels like it. Yeah. Uh, Tourette's of convenience. He only has Tourette's when it's convenient for him to have Tourette's. That he's never been fucking diagnosed with a day in his life. He has it when it's Absolutely. convenient. Uh, I gotta pop back in the audience because I gotta give my cat his pain medication. Ooh. Okay. No problem. He, he's got some teeth as problems, so oh, we're getting that are- dealt with very soon. Uh, I don't think I told anybody, but Bear has passed away yesterday. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Um, it turned out that sore on his neck I was telling you about, you know, that just wouldn't heal, no matter how many times we took him to the vet, and yeah. it just would not heal. Um, we ended up having to put him to sleep yesterday because it turned out to be cancer. Oh, God, I'm sorry. It was untreated. I knew it smelled. I knew something was wrong. I took him to the vet ungodly amounts of times. And they couldn't figure out what it was. And they finally were able to, you know, get some biopsies of it because they just were dumbfounded. They had tried every treatment under the sun because they were thinking it was a skin issue, allergy issue, uh, sensitivity issue. Uh, They... They were going through all the things. He'd been on several different antibiotics and medications out the wazoo. And they they just could not pin it down. And they took the biopsy because he had gotten worse and started that wheezy kind of rattle. And so he took him back and said they got the biopsies and then they had got it back pretty quickly. And said that it was cancer and that it was untreatable and that we needed to put him down because he was suffering. So he crossed the Rainbow Bridge yesterday. Christ, I'm so sorry. I hope the kids are okay. Uh, Regardless, have a good dream. Thank you. I just thought I'd tell you because you brought the cat up and I meant to say something earlier but didn't. Yeah. Yeah. 
Don't <laughs> fucking take care of yourself. I will. Bye. Or even more. Well, on the uh, sister Kim, on the recording, I would just advise you to look both ways before you cross the street. I want to file a complaint. I have a legal right to file a complaint against your abuse and neglect. You absolutely do, and you're more. Than and he has a legal right to have that right. And I want your lieutenant here. Depriving me, sir, is Article 18 USC. For two, but you pr listen, provide listen, other Andy, people with disabilities. Our is a very busy man. And you know if, what? If you want to file a complaint, you have to go to the vet. You know what? I have a complaint. disability that you're putting me in danger, Officer Hussey, by crossing streets. You want to verify that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking you across no. streets. I'm no, you're per you you're forcing me to walk to your station, which is a mile away. It's a mile away. And I. I have, I have a legal. Dad, to so you call the cops there, so you can create an altercation. Just so you can file charges on him. You just admitted it, Andrew, that you called that cop there. Just so you can create an altercation so you can file charges on him. It's a good thing you admitted that on video. So you admit you're just chasing lawsuits. You're creating altercations so you can file lawsuits. Do you know you just admitted to filing a false police report, Andrew? Because you called them there telling them that you were going to do something to yourself, and that wasn't true. That's a false police report. Do you know that that is illegal? It's also called malingering. Um, wasting valuable emergency services resources. That's illegal. And you just admitted to is illegal. You could go to jail for just what you admitted to right there. That alone. And you, <laughs> God, Andrew. I would almost feel sorry for you if you weren't such a piece of crap. You just admitted to calling the cops there so you could file charges on them. For what? Andrew, not tolerating your bull crap? Really? Listen, listen to what he just said again. And I'm here is to make sure you don't. And the only yourself. reason to clear my charges against you. Okay. And I don't like lights flashing in my eyes. It hurts my eyes. All right. Well, it's for our safety and yours. So you're just going to have to get you. The, uh, the only reason I called you here is so I could file charges on you. The only reason. I called and falsely filed a police report that I was going to harm myself. Knowingly lying to the police was so that you would come here and I could create an altercation and turn and file charges on you. That is illegal, Andrew. Not only is it illegal, legal but it's it's fucked up you did lie to the police 
You lie to the police all the time, Andrew, all the time. You just admitted it. The only reason I falsely claimed I was going to hurt myself was so that you would come out here and I could create an altercation with you that I could file charges against you on. That is lying to the police, Andrew. You lied to them to, in order to get him out there. They do, Hyde. McQueen, will you do do the thing? Because I'm not going to have him in here if he's not going to be on panel. I'm not going to argue with him in my chat. He's had every opportunity. I'm not, no, uh-uh. And you can walk with me back to my hotel room. And I can't stand the lights. It bothers my eyes. I have a disability. I'm being deprived civil rights here. You can have You were deprived of nothing, Andrew. You didn't get your way, therefore you were going to file another false police report. Because you didn't get your way to work. Thank you, McLean. I'm sorry, and normally I wouldn't boot somebody out of my chat if I'm talking about them. But Andrew has been given every chance to come his ass up here and explain himself, and he won't do it. He was given an opportunity a uh, short while ago, and he, he did nothing but sit up here and lie to my face. And all he wants to do is come in here and argue and lie. I'm not going to have him sit in my chat and lie to me to my face some more. I'm not having it. And come to my, my whole room. You may be able to gaslight and manipulate these people, Andrew, but you're not going to gaslight me. You're not going to manipulate me. You're not going to emotionally extort me. You're not going to sit here and lie to me and tell me I'm not seeing and hearing what I'm seeing and hearing. McQueen, get it? I'm not even going to read it. I'm not going to read what you said. You don't know. I'm not going to read what you typed, Andrew. I'm not even going to read it. Because you were given the chance. And you lied time after time after time after time. And you keep continuing to come in here and trying to gaslight me, trying to manipulate me, and lie to my face. I'm not having it. So unless you're going to come up here and explain yourself, you're not to be in my chat. Because I'm tired of it. Our love for Terry Stout. you McQueen sorry but he comes in here he disrupts my chat he lies to me he gaslights me and then he goes on his channel and he calls me awful names and lies no I'm not no
Hey YouTube, Eddie Ditch here. So, my dad accuses me of wanting to be babied and have my diaper change and have him clean and I don't do anything around him to help him. And I you do ask people to change your diaper, Andrew. You asked me to change your diaper and bathe you. Another lie, Andrew. Yet another lie. You asked me multiple times. McQueen can tell you. McQueen was here one of the times you asked me to change your diaper and give you a bath. You have asked me that on several occasions and if he can't tell you Shelly can tell you because she was here when you asked me to change your diaper and give you bathies so don't sit there and say you don't ask people to do that because you asked me to do it and your father shouldn't be changing your diaper at 40 years old Andrew you are perfectly capable of bathing yourself and changing your own diaper. That's disgusting. Trying to force other people into your diaper fetish. No. So, last week i forgot what day this was last week i think it was thursday or friday he asked me to clean and dust the entertainment center look at all the things that i had everywhere this was between the help that dad helped me with where to put some of this stuff to help me organize and he showed me the steps that he wanted me to do to be able to organize it like you see here all the tapes and stuff down here and things like that so my dad knows that i need help with the organizing and the step-by-step -step and the problem solving because the day before he told me to dust this um off i go doing that and he tells me how to how, how what he wants me to do. I find my record player and a bunch of because he helped me be able to know what to do and how to do the steps that I've been fighting him on, help him. And because I see my brother sitting around doing nothing while Dad cleans. I get yelled at because I want to help my dad out, but he doesn't want to help me with the steps of things, and then I get blamed for making messes and stuff. This shows that I kept the area clean, and dad had to go last week. Hey, Classic. Good to see you. Sweetums, how's your lady? I missed your face around here, buddy. We love our classic up in here, up in here. You missed it because Andrew's in here pitching a fit again and lying and gaslighting me. I get accused of making messes after they clean and wanting Joe and Dad to do all the work. When I see Joe standing up, doing nothing while Dad does the cleaning, and I am doing what I'm expected to do, and I need to do it, 
and I'm sorry that my dad is overwhelmed and then takes it out on me because he and then I get mistreated because of it. And then he mistreats me because I claim abuse and neglect because he doesn't want to help me with what I need help with. And he gets frustrated, so he has to defend himself and blame me for being the problem and everything on me because I need all this help that nobody's helping me with. And then he lies about me wanting my way and shit. So this is the dining room table as it is last night. I asked Dad for help with where to put some of this stuff and what, where to organize it and, 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 and the sorting and planning organizing part. And Dad didn't help me with that like he was doing with other things that I'm going to show you. So the other... So when I was cleaning the, the, um, the stuff, the entertainment center... And putting stuff away as dad told me to do with me. I had a poop. Because I was hurting a lot. And. I had trouble where. I have a trouble skipping the. Tasks and stuff. And coming back to it. I had to allow me the freedom to continue cleaning and because it doesn't bother me because of you know I'm so used to it and I can't help it but the way people treat me like it's a choice to poop yourself and have other people change me when it's not something I can help or want to do and I still don't mind it except for when people treat me that way and mistreat me and refuse me the help I need because of it. I get upset and I have a meltdown because of that. And I don't want to wear diapers because of that. And they want me the freedom and my independence so I can continue and I can live a life outside of sitting on the toilet all day every day and all day long the point is not getting that help or assistance that i need and i have proof that allows me my independence and freedom so i don't have you know issues but i need some assistance with that This is showing that I, I cleaned up and dusted like Dad asked me to. This is my bed area last night. Um, I'm still up because I, I'm not feeling well and I'm feeling really dizzy. And I'll get to that in a second. But I don't want to go to the hospital because the way I'm treated. And they don't help me. So this shows that I, what I ask for help with, and what I need help with, and why I ask for it, and why the house looks like it is, and I don't get the help I need. This shows that I was able to keep up the house, even though Dad and Joe blames me. Yesterday, bef uh, so the other day, I was feeling feeling dizzy and not feeling well, but I was able to get help from dad. I asked dad because of all these ants were over the place in the kitchen. And I know that causes, you know, what causes ants is not cleaning up. So I asked dad if he wanted me to clean the countertop off so we can get rid of the ants. He said, yes, good idea. I take off all the things off the counter that you see, wipe it down, and Dad does not yell at me because I leave it out because I need with the sorting back neatly. Or I took that is elderly abuse, there, Andrew. 
your parents' home should not look that way. Not with you and your brother living under their roof. It should never look like that. That house needs to be condemned. Like nobody should live in that house. It is so nasty and cluttered up that it is a hazard. Do you have any idea how many fire hazards I see in this picture? Do you want me to point them out? Look at that kitchen, dude. There are dishes piled up halfway up the window, dude. There's no excuse for this. Whatsoever. And you know, you wouldn't need this cook over here if you would clean off the stove. If you didn't pile dishes from one end of the counter to the other, you might have some space to move. They probably do have roaches, Shelly. It's that nasty. I mean, they wouldn't need this little cooker over here if they would clean off the stove and oven. They would have a surface to cook on if they would clean it up. But there's dishes from one side of this picture all the way to the other. And you can tell there's more dishes outside of frame. Like, there's not one solid inch of counter space right there. Not one. And he says he cleaned it. I would hate to see it before you cleaned it. And there were hundreds of fire hazards in this picture. Hundreds of health hazards. There is a dead plant in this picture. I mean, crusty dead. Matter of fact, there's two dead plants in this picture. You got the cooker right over a drawer with paper towels and towels in it. You got Drano, I mean, really? Next to your, your cooking stuff? What, I mean, you've got Bug Killer, Drano, Antifreeze, it looks like. Dude, clean that up. Because I can't do it on my own. Yesterday, I did the dishes like Dad had asked me to do. That's in my routine. And here's proof I do dishes and do chores. So nobody can accuse me of this shit. And I'm not trying to show you I'm right or wrong. But this shows that I do. And I also clean the toilet like I was asked to and reminded to. So I want you to know that. A lot of health and Kevin Mercy and, and Mill Fillmore and my endocrine allergies writes down step by step it may not be in pictures to help me understand and follow the instructions but it's simple straightforward direct and step by step to help me follow the instruction because dad wasn't with me at doctor's office because he had to work that day and i go to because i needed documentation to support the medical needs 
and the connection between my endocrine system and the developmental there allowed me to have my dad on the phone and to help me from home or from his you know car and that's why i got this to help me this is the medicine that i was put on i was taking off jardines because of the cotton issue and i'm having a lot of side effects because of this and that's why i kept on going to hospital again because of this issue that i'm having so you're going to see something in a second that I'm going to show you in another video. But I want to show you again, somebody's, oh, you're faking your autism. The same reason why I rock. I find helpful for me to swing on a swing set. That is why I like going on the swing. It also helps me regulate my emotions. And like I had in school, the OT swing that I had to do. And after the swing, they put me on the balance boards and the stilts and stuff to help me with the coordination and balance. So that's what I do at the playground after I swing. I go balancing on the balancing board. A board to help me with my coordination and balance like they did in school with me. I get the same effect when riding my bike. I get the workout of what I learned online. The vestibular system and the proprioceptive sensory issue. And be that I can't regulate on my own without having these extra therapies and stuff. This is why autism makes so much sense to me and why I need sensory integration therapy because I can't regulate my senses. And because of that, I have a hard time stimulating and decreasing the sensory input and the stress that causes my body that causes my behavior issues. It's why I've been asking Dad for a sensory swing, knowing that OT had helped me with this. And the ability to repeat things like this, people think I have a hard time riding my bike because of my disability. But I can still do the same issues. I have a hard time crossing the street. And I have the visual and auditory processing issue. And the coordination scale issue that everybody denies me help with getting dressed and, and taking care of myself and, you know. And then I had the ticks and stims that make it hard for me. Added issue. People mistreat me. So, because you wanted your own sensory swing, and you're not faking your sensory issues because you can ride a bicycle. That's the proof. The proof that you have autism, and that you're not faking autism, is that you can ride a bicycle. So, I guess everyone who can ride bicycles is autistic. Your proof is not proof at all of anything besides you can ride a bicycle okay well that's proof that you can ride a bicycle you can cross streets you do it all the time you have zero problems crossing the street you don't have sensory issues because you go to concerts and you dumped an entire bottle of diffuser oil into your infuser diffuser and you go to the guitar shop regularly you, you have a a soundboard where you can make music you have a guitar 
you have a sound system, you have a DJ kit, a turntable. You do not have sensory issues. You, even if you did have some kind of sensory issues, that doesn't prove you have autism because not everyone sensitive to certain things has autism. Those are not mutually exclusive, Andrew. That doesn't prove anything. What does prove something, though, is the specialist who specializes in developmental and developmental disabilities um, or mental disabilities, kind of like autism, schizophrenia, those kinds of things. Um, they, they specialize in diagnosing these disabilities outright said that you have never had autism and that you have schizoaffective disorder that you've never had autism and you don't 14 other doctors told you that not including the hundreds of emergency room doctors not including the hundreds of specialists you have seen trying to force them to diagnose you with a dis disability you don't have. They're never going to diagnose you with autism because you don't have autism. Stop it. Me because of, and I'm not lazy, I'm not my mind. I'm not a baby. Uh, I don't want to be a baby or treat me like a baby. And my dad treats me like I didn't get my way. And I'm always, he doesn't want to accept. Your dad has been over backwards for you, Andrew. Shame on you for the way you treat him, by the way. You treat him like garbage. You don't deserve your dad he's a saint your dad is a fucking saint for the shit that he puts up with like do you realize how lucky you are to have a dad like him like he is such a good person and you're a horrible person for the way you treat him you really are. I can't think of a worse person than you because of the way you treat him. I'm not impressed by the way you treat your, your family. You know, the people who care for you day in and day out. You know, the people you abuse constantly. Those people, yeah. Those people deserve an award for putting up with you. Those people don't deserve the way you treat them. You are insanely abusive. My point of view, and my brother does the same thing. That causes hey, Andrew. Your point of view is not the only point of view. That counts. You know, other people's opinions and feelings matter. I know that you're under the delusion that only your thoughts, opinions, and feelings matter, but that's not the way that works. Their their opinions, their feelings, their thoughts, that they, they matter. Maybe not to you, but I care what they think. People in my chat care what they think. Everybody cares what they think, but you. Because they are important too. Not just you. The world does not revolve around you. I think it's high time you realize that. 
and stopped expecting the entire world and universe to revolve around you. You aren't that special. You aren't unique. You're just a bum. You are. You're a bum. What is this? Oh, calling the cops on that again. That's great. Thank you for calling Adult Protective Services. So, Dad has lied to police all the time about me. I've been on Instagram every time. And Dad has lied about my confidence and my, what I need to do and what I can and can't do. And he keeps changing the story, Henry. And that's why I'm not getting help. Yeah, you heard the recording of him not wanting to take care of me. Okay, but he's not doing anything to help me. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask Dad politely while you're on the voicemail with me. So you're a witness. Dad, you don't want to take care of me. I cannot take care of myself. I don't know how. I can't make my own decisions. I can't shop. I can't cook. I have a hard time. I'm in cotton. I cannot touch my sugar. I cannot plan my activity living. I have a hard time following, finding my routine. I don't do well with sensory input. Can you please take to the hospital if you don't want to take care of me because it's causing you too much stress? So I could get somebody else to take care of me, Dad. Because it's not working out here and I don't feel safe and healthy because of it. Can you? So, Henry. He's ignoring me. Uh, and I'm just uh, run away. He, so you no, Andrew, you're not going to get help because you have called and fi filed so many false police reports that it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. They're not going to believe you because you lie. You're lying now. Your dad didn't do anything to you except for not give you your way. That's all he did was tell you no. So you called the cops because daddy told you no. God forbid him discipline you. Can't have that. <gasps> He's calling me a baby. I'm a lazy. I'm a child, and I wanted my way. He bullies me, and I'm I'm don't feel safe because of it. I'm asking Dad for help. He's neglecting me. He's fighting me. I take my pills. He's threatening to punch me because the officer wanted to put me on 941. His dad doesn't want to help me take care of me, and yet you allow him to abuse me of violence. Physical, emotional, psychological, and neglect me. Of this is my adult protective service worker that's allowing this to happen. I don't like it. It makes me feel like I'm trying to get my way because I can't do things on my own. And you allow my father to lie knowing he's the only person that could get me to help because he's the collateral witness before age 22. And he allowed me to be put in danger, Henry, and I don't know why. That's I'm running away. Dad has all these things that he could do to help me get out of Dad's house. He has my money. He could use my medical and money. He has a say where he spends my money. He has a say where I live. He has a say what 
what if I get my medicines or not. He has a say of abusing me and putting me down, and I don't have capacity. I am told by 211 that they cannot assist me because of the level of care that I need. But yet, because you lie about the of care that you need. You don't need someone to change your diaper. You don't need someone to spoon feed you. You don't need someone to bathe you. You lie and fabricate the level of care you need. You're doing it right now. <clears throat> abuses me refuses to take care of me he fights me and he abuses me and he no no you fabricate things Andrew and you lie your dad literally said he's not gonna allow you to throw away your medications because you need them and you called the cops and said he was abusing you i think you need to look up the term abuse or abuse and really research it because i have never seen him abuse you i have seen him put his foot down when your behavior was unacceptable i have seen him hold you accountable for your behavior. I have seen him fed up with your behavior, but it all comes back to your behavior. No one is abusing you. They are holding you to a standard. You are capable of meeting. You just don't want to because you think you deserve special treatment. You think that you are the only disabled person on the face of this earth. You think you are entitled to special treatment for disabilities you don't have. You do it for attention, Andrew. And everyone, including the police, are sick of it. They try to help you and you file police reports on them because they won't give you your way and arrest your elderly father for not abusing you? No. Get a grip. Won't help me. And lies about it. Because he says you're a baby. Blah, blah, blah. That he doesn't want to accept he because he abuses me, take out of me because I need all this help. He lies about me so I can't get any help. Wrong. Again. He doesn't lie about you and he doesn't abuse you because you need all this help. No. He refuses to do things for you that he knows you can do yourself because he is not able to do it. Your father is elderly, Andrew. He cannot do the things you are asking him to do. You make up symptoms. You make up disabilities. You don't have, like, I have the disability of bad decisions. No, you have the disability of you don't get your way. Your disability is entitlement. You completely fabricate your level of needs and you 
you claim a much higher need than you actually are. You don't need a third of the things you say you need. You want them. Sure. You, you want somebody to change your diaper and bathe you and feed you so that all you have to do is sit around on your tubby ass and play video games. Well, sorry. None of us get to do what we want to do in life. We do what we have to do. Nobody wants to get up and go to work every day, but they do it because they want to eat. Grow up. If he doesn't want to take care of me, he doesn't want me in his I don't he tell the truth and get me the help I need. Instead of fighting me. What you mean to say there is why don't he lie for me and tell them what I need him to tell them so that I can get benefits I don't deserve. You want him to lie to the government for you so that you can get benefits you are not entitled to. That you don't deserve because you don't have the disabilities you're claiming to have in order to get those benefits. You're trying to commit fraud and your dad doesn't want to go to prison so your dad's not going to lie for you and commit fraud. Andrew, no. The answer is no. Stop it. I'm without capacity, and I need assistance. I can't do it on my own, because I rely on smart people, and I'm retarded because of it. And I can't take it anymore of it. And it hurts me to I can't cope. But yet, Dad doesn't see what he's doing. He's only hurting himself. He's hurting himself. Joe's hurting himself because Dad, he's allowing Dad to do it to me. Do you know what? Nation for the day. No, they're not hurting their self because they refuse to commit fraud. They're making you mad because they're not willing to lie for you and commit fraud, felony fraud, and defraud the government. But anyway, I am going to hop off here for the night. I hope you guys enjoyed this stream of ghosties and goblins. Goblins being Andrew and cryptids. Um... I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.